Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 3rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And teaching web application security, one of the things that often comes up is simple authentication bypasses. And I do mention things like a stupid cookie that says user equals admin. You would think this wouldn't work, but well, uh, that's exactly what I was writing about today. Abuse exactly this type of vulnerability, a cookie user equals admin. In addition, the vulnerability that is likely being exploited here uses a command injection vulnerability where when you're trying to change your password it will also inject commands for you just to clarify lb link don't confuse it with tp link uh, lb link is a chinese oem as far as i can tell their routers may be sold under various uh, trademarks winga WRAC 1200, apparently same vulnerability, so likely same manufacturer and same firmware. One problem with sort of these uh, routers that are sold under different uh, trade names is that it can be difficult to figure out where to actually get firmware for these devices before you buy any kind of device like this, always try to find a manufacturer's website, check out if firmware is easily available from the website. And while you're there, also check if they have any kind of end of life policy to make sure you're not buying a device that will no longer receive any updates. And talking about routers and related devices, we do have an update for Aruba OS, uh, that's part of HP Enterprise. Number of different vulnerabilities are being addressed here. Four of them are buffer overflows with a critical rating and a CVSS score of 9.8. At least it's not a weak default password. And if you're brave enough to actually try to parse XML in JavaScript uh, using the NPM library XML Crypto, which is the XML crypto library available in NPM. Well, it didn't really do much to actually verify the certificates uh, being included in an XML message. So when you're creating a signed or encrypted XML message, you have the ability to include any certificates in a key info block. Of course, you would expect that the certificates are being verified, that they are signed with some kind of trust anchor. Well, uh, XML Crypto thought that this is really just for people who are sort of non-trusting and think that users may occasionally like slip in a bad document. So they just skipped that check. And uh, that way it was possible to submit fake signed XML documents by just including the key that you used to sign your fake document. This issue has been fixed in version four through six of this library. It's possible that you're still using uh, versions before four, basically that's the major version of the library. In that case, well, it's up to you to actually check the key info certificates before you trust the output of XML crypto. And Lumen's Black Lotus Lab uh, did uh, find uh, some compromised uh, small office, home office routers that uh, were infected with malware that essentially placed the good old machine in the middle attack. Now, we have plenty of ways to basically make these uh, attacks meaningless. We do have strict transport security. We do have secure parameters on cookies. But of course, no, developers are stupid and are not using uh, these particular uh, precautions. And that's exactly what Cuttlefish, that's what they're calling uh, this malware, takes advantage of in uh, that it will intercept HTTP connections, try to then redirect users to HTTP or spoofed HTTP versions of websites and then steals credentials that way. Interestingly, it specifically goes after cloud credentials like Cloudflare auth keys, AWS secret key. 
Not even sure if they're looking here sort of for development sites that may not use HTTPS properly. It's amazingly simple to actually configure these services correctly if you're using them in actual Cloudflare or AWS. Actually, in some cases, it's almost more work to not configure uh, these services correctly. Hey, but don't be afraid of additional router vulnerabilities. I just read another uh, paper where someone suggested to use AI to fix home router vulnerabilities. Not going to link to the paper uh, because it's just a waste of time. Thanks for listening. Hope this wasn't a waste of time and uh, talk to you again on Monday. Bye.